Buffalo Turquoise, otherwise known as Carol. Hey, 12. Welcome to my YouTube channel, my podcast, whatever I'm on, whatever you're watching me or listening to me on. I've adopted or formulating a uh, 12 step program, Limerence Anonymous, and I don't know if it's taking off. I've been getting mixed uh, responses, but I'm going to just keep on going because. It's in my heart right now, in my broken heart right now. Um, I'm going to read a uh, passage from the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous. In my ed edition, it's page 32. Now, I'm not sure what um, it's like on the newer books. Um, someone bought me this uh, AA book. Oh my god, 1991. A friend of mine. Uh, that used to, I used to meet in a 12-step, that I used to know in a 12-step meeting, and I donated it to a uh, other 12-step group that I um, was involved in back in uh, the late 90s, um, 1996. Um, and, oh God, January 27, 1991. So uh, this is a an old book, a really old book, and I'm not sure what the edition is, but um, this book existed in 1991, so that was a long time ago, it's 2024, and I'm glad I hung on to it, because I knew I was going to at least need it for academic purposes, if not for 12-step uh, purposes, and uh, page 32, uh, more about alcoholism. Um, about the man of 30. I'm going to read this story about him. Um, yeah. I'm going to read a few paragraphs. I think this is the story. And I'm going to compare it to my story right now because um, I'm tempted to. Uh, try again to be friends with my uh, limerent person and I've been told in AA meetings and in 12 step meetings that um, and even in meetings like uh, Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous and the like um, you might think Carol that you can handle being around this person that you can't. You fall apart and come unglued and think irrationally around this person. Even if you can manage to behave yourself and not stalk this person or not do anything objectionable, you um, you fall apart emotionally and we don't want to see you go through that. That's like watching an alcoholic get drunk. That's why I'm com comparing it to alcoholism. It's really the same thing. Um, or similar, it's just a, it's a different problem, but it's a similar thing going on with the brain. Um, the dopamine, the addiction, the, uh, the high that I get when I'm, uh, on a person, you know, on, thinking about a person or fantasizing about them romantically or, um, having the like of a fantasy, even a friendship fantasy where I want to, you know, be there for them etc. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to read this. Um, you can, uh, if you have a big book, you can uh, read along with me if you want. Just read, it's the chapter more about alcoholism. Now, I don't know if it's on page 32 on your book, but it's on page 32 on mine. Um, look at more about alcoholism and try and look for the paragraph that says, a man of 30. A man of 30 was doing a great deal of spree drinking. He was very nervous in the morning after these bouts and quieted, in, quieted himself with more liquor. He was ambitious to succeed in business, but saw that he would get nowhere if he drank at all. Once he started, he had no control whatever. He made up his mind that until he had been successful in business and had retired, he would not touch another drop. An exceptional man, he remained bone dry for 25 years and retired at the age of 55 after a successful and happy business career. Now I'm going to stop right there. He made up his mind 
that until he had been successful in business and had retired, he would not touch another drop. An exceptional man, he remained bone dry for 25 years and retired at the age of 55. Now, um, today is Friday, and last Tuesday, I swore I never wanted to see this person again, this limerent, my limerent person again, because I recognized that I was powerless over my limerent feelings around this person. And my life was unmanageable every time I had to be around her. I was just really hooked up in my head. Up, up in my head. Um, so, um, I'm feeling a little better. I'm coming up again. I'm, I'm drying out and sobering up, so to speak, from this, being around this person, because it's been like maybe three days now. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And, um, and I have the weekend. I have uh, tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday. And I'm going to talk to my uh, counselor on Monday. I'm not going to go in for uh, treatment. I'm going to go in to consult with my counselor and talk to him and discuss the future of my treatment so that I won't have to be around this person. Um, I discussed transferring in my last video, transferring to another program, but I'm falling victim to a belief that's very similar to this. Then he fell victim to a belief which practically every alcoholic has, that his long period of sobriety and self-discipline had qualified him to drink as other men. Out came his carpet slippers and a bottle. In two months he was in a hospital, puzzled and humiliated. I know that if I'm around this woman again, I'm going to end up the same way I was yesterday, the day before yesterday, and Tuesday. And, uh, Tuesday. and I don't want to be there anymore, and I'm, I'm telling on myself right now, I'm calling myself out right now. You know, when, you, uh, when you're drinking and you're sobering up, you might think you can handle having a drink or drinking. You can't. If you, you know, if you uh, end up in AA, you're going to be told that you can't drink ever again. I'm founding Limerence Anonymous, and I know that I cannot be around my limerent interest anymore, or I'm going to get messed up too, just like the alcoholic gets drunk. In two months, he was in a hospital, puzzled and humiliated. I've been afraid of going inpatient again, having to go inpatient, because my symptoms are getting worse. My anxiety and depression are worse. He tried to regulate his drinking for a while, making several trips to the hospital meantime. Yeah, I tried to regulate. I tried to, um, I tried to, uh, deal, deal with her when she was in a good way, and, um, I got high I got high on her love anyway. I got high on her approval. I got high on her uh, complimenting on my uh, jewelry and my clothes and my hairstyle, etc. Just examples. Um, I got high on her her beautiful smile and her even saying hello to me. And then the next day uh, she was like acting like I wasn't even alive. Just walking past me and not even giving me the time of day and I, I went I went through severe I went through brain withdrawal like I like I was going off drugs like a drug addict or an alcoholic drying out and detox and going through withdrawal I don't want to keep going through that over and over again I am sensitive I, I have an allergy to uh, limerence like an alcoholic has an allergy to alcohol as said in the big book I'll finish the story. Gathering all his forces, he attempted to stop altogether and found he could not. Yeah, I can't stop reacting every time I'm around her. I, I get I get teary. I, you know, I, I start crying a little bit. You know, it's not just the pain. It's like, it's overwhelming when I'm around her. Every means of solving his problem, which money could buy, was at his disposal. So he probably had a lot of stuff, a lot of resource available to help him not drink, help him stop drinking. Every attempt failed. 
though a robust man at retirement, he went to pieces quickly and was dead within four years. This case contains a powerful lesson. Most of us have believed that if we remain sober for a long stretch, we could therefore drink normally. We can handle it. But here is a person, a man, who at 55 years found he was just where he had left off at 30. We have seen the truth demonstrated again and again. Once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. Commencing to drink after a period of sobriety, we're in a short time as bad as ever. If we are planning to stop drinking, there must be no reservation of any kind, no, nor any lurking notion that someday we will be immune to alcohol. I'm not going to be immune to my limer and interest, ever. The only way I can be immune to my limer and interest is if I stay away from her, forever. So I'm going to talk to my counselor. I, I talked to him on the phone today, and uh, yesterday I was planning on just straight up leaving getting out of there and I thought he was really uh, cold and callous and inconsiderate of my my needs but I talked to him today on the phone and I think he was a little I don't know if he had maybe 24 hours to think about or a week three days to think about how he treated me maybe I had three days to calm down um, we talked a little bit and he said we need to we do need to have a discussion Carol your, maybe your future treatment and I said good you must understand that I cannot be around this person it's toxic you know she isn't toxic but I have a sensitive reaction my biochemistry uh, changes when I'm around her and I don't want that change anymore I want to stay stable I want to stay uh, lucid I have a word uh, very much like the alcoholic you know sober I have a word in my 12-step program, Limerence Anonymous, I have a word, lucid. Lucid means thinking clearly. Lucid means you are in the present. You are clear-headed. You know, it's like uh, there, there's a phrase called lucid dreaming. If you're, if you're asleep and you're dreaming, sometimes you can develop a skill where you can control, you can direct your dreaming with a method called lucid dreaming. So... Um, that's how I came up with the idea of lucid, because um, when you're limerent, you're not thinking clearly. You're in a fog, and you're on a high, or you're in a very extreme low. But when you're lucid, when you're stable, you're, it's like being sober. And I'm getting lucid now, and um, I, ha I wanted to read that passage because I started thinking, um, oh my god, I, I feel like I, I can... Uh, handle being around her, especially if I'm going to be talking to my counselor, and I'm like, no, 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 Carol, and my mentor in Canada, who was my, now my de facto sponsor, um, he goes, no, 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 Jean Carol, you know, you, you and I talked already Tuesday night, you can't be around her, take step one again, we admitted we were powerless over limerence, that our lives had become unmanageable, take care,